Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Ponzi went out uh, against my wishes and, and picked up a uh, all-in-one scanner printer fax unit, which you know wouldn't have you know caused me too much frustration, except for the fact that uh, it's an inkjet. I cannot stand inkjet printers, not because of the quality so much as the price of the ink. Oh my God! Just one cartridge for the yellow ink is like forty bucks. Oh, come on, dude, seriously. Oh, so expensive. But uh, some people love their ink jets. Oh, well, I've got an e a top five email that just came in from Brawley. And uh, Brawley is a, a, a member of our community at large, uh, watches our videos on YouTube, and stops by the chat room every once in a while. This is, a, uh, I guess he goes by the nickname Jameson. And uh, I'm going to now read his top five ways to fix your own inkjet printer. Hmm, fair enough. I work as the technology coordinator for a school in Alabama. Now, this is not me. I, I've never really, I don't even think I've been to Alabama. This is, this is Jameson who is writing this. <clears throat> I also try to get my users to get used to the idea of using network printers so they can share in small work groups to save money paper, ink, etc. But many of my users, most of them teachers, insist on having their own color inkjet printers on their desk. Since I've had this job for almost eight years now, I've come to expect similar issues relating to these inkjet printers and wish to share some of my solutions with you and your viewers. Well, it's, they're not just my viewers, they're now yours as well. The top five ways to fix common issues with inkjet printers. Number one, slam the lid. While this may sound violent, it fixed the classic, my printer won't print, help email that I often get. Some models of printer, specifically the HP DeskJet 5650, have a lid that sometimes just won't shut firmly. Sometimes it closes slightly off center and a firm closing of that lid that covers the ink chamber tends to fix it. It also gets a comical reaction when the, from the user when they think I'm going to work some techno magic and end up fixing it with a caveman approach. Check the lid first. Number two, check the ink. Many printer manufacturers have made it very easy to tell which ink goes where using a variety of numbers, colors, shapes on the ink cartridge and its caddy. Yet even the best of us have been known to put them in wrong. Check to make sure the color cartridge is in the color caddy and the black and white one, I think he means just the black one, are there white ink cartridges? Anyway, is in its proper caddy. Make sure it is for the proper printer model as well. But one thing that people fail to realize is that ink cartridges do go bad and have expiration dates printed on them. I discovered this was a real issue when many of the departments at my school decided to save a few bucks by using recycled and refilled ink cartridges exclusively. When many of our ink jets, ink jets start, started functioning... <clears throat> Let me try it again. When many of our ink jets started functioning strangely, I checked the ink after exhausting all other efforts. Sure enough, they were using recycled ink in a cartridge that expired two years ago. I popped in a new brand name, albeit pricier cartridge, and the issue was fixed. Number three, do a power hotkey pokey. The hotkey, oh, hokey pokey. Hotkey is, <laughs> boy, I'm reading into things there. Do the power hokey pokey. I need more eggnog. I developed this routine over time to the point where many of my users now know it by heart and can fix the issue themselves, though I'm still trying to work on making it into a real song. Sometimes an inkjet, or any printer for that matter, just needs a good reboot, in the same way that rebooting a computer seems to fix almost anything. Hold the power button down on the printer while it's on. While holding it down, unplug the printer's power. Once the printer's power is unplugged, or the power cord is unplugged, continue to hold down the power button for five or six seconds. After about 10 or 15 seconds of doing nothing, plug the printer back in, press the power button. This solves an amazing amount of issues. An even easier solution that works many times in certain situations is just to unplug the printer from its power source and then plug it back in. Some buildings, like the one I work in, are grounded very poorly. After a good southern thunderstorm in an Alabama summer, it seemed like half of my injects simply didn't turn on no matter how hard one might press the power button. Unplugging the printer and plugging it back in seemed to discharge some sort of mysterious static electricity bubble that prevented it from getting power. I can't explain this in any way. I just know it's worked many times. Number four, learn to speak printer ease. 
Many times, the printer simply tells you what is wrong with it with a series of lights. You just need to learn how to decode the message. Most printer manufacturers list what these lights are and their blinking sequences mean on their website. Finding out what those lights mean can help you realize that the problem may be nothing more than a sheet of paper jammed up inside the printer. The website will also tell you or even illustrate how to correct the issue. Number five, saving the worst for last. Reinstall the latest printer drivers. Yes, it's that age-old trump card that any computer tech throws down when all else fails. But seriously, printer drivers can become corrupt for any number of reasons. And uninstalling your printer and installing the latest drivers, so uninstalling the printer software, then reinstalling it, found at the manufacturer's website, can do nothing but good things for you, even if it doesn't fix the problem at hand. Many times, the problem can be fixed by popping in the CD that came with your printer. If your CD-ROM is set to autoplay, the CD should give you the option to uninstall or even reinstall the drivers. You won't get the latest drivers that way, but you will get the original drivers that your printer came with and the ones it was using when it worked properly. As always, I look forward to your comments and additional tips. Love your YouTube videos and tips. Keep it up. JB of techtipsforparents.org. Techtipsforparents.org. And uh, I, I got to tell you, I, I love this list. I, I, you know, I, I don't know if it's necessarily going to save me uh, from dealing with Ponzi's uh, inkjet woes, largely because that's related to pricing. Uh, but it's a good list nonetheless. Uh, anybody else got any more tips for printers, inkjets, lasers, printers in general? Send them in. My email address is chris at perillo.com. I read every bit of email that I get. May not respond to it all, uh, but I certainly do see it. Uh, send in any kind of top five list you have, whether it's related to tech or not. And, of course, if you want to join us in our chat room, which is i got to reach behind my Mac to, to point out the chat room there. We're, uh, we're, we're here all the time. And sometimes we're talking about printers, sometimes we're talking about driver software. It's usually about technology, although uh, we've also been known to talk about other things, like, um, like, uh, okay, so it's usually technology. If you'd like to join us, you're welcome to. We're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, including on New Year's Day. Ha <laughs> ha! Top that. And we're always open at live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.